It is 7 a.m., the last day of 2017, and I'm loading my car up with some canvases, and I'm gonna head to the coast. I'm just using these Blick Studio uh, 16 by 20s, and I actually really like the uh, painting surface, and they're inexpensive, so they're kind of fun to experiment with. Um, so I usually take at least one of these with me in case I feel like doing something uh, large, and then I also take some smaller panels as well. So, Also, I usually give it a light sanding um, before I leave the house, uh, just because there's some bumps on there and it's a little rough. So when it's smoother, it's nicer to paint on. So just a little breakfast before hitting the road. The usual oatmeal. This is actually steel cut oats. And I know a lot of people don't like to make steel cut oats because you, know, you have to cook it for like 30 minutes. But what I do is I just make it um, and boil it the night before and uh, for one minute, leave it on the stove overnight and in the morning it's all ready. That's a lot of dates. That might be too sweet. These things are super sweet. Okay, so I've got to, I've still got to pack up my palette um, and I usually load that with paint before I leave and uh, I keep my paints in this box, it's just like a, you know, just like a plastic box, but, um, and then I leave it in my car uh, when I'm painting, and then when I come back into the studio, I bring it in with me. So all my paints are usually in this container. Anyway, nitro gloves, trying these out. I usually use the latex ones, but uh, they were out of them, so. Gonna give these nitrile ones a try. So far, so good. One thing I think that is really important is actually squeezing out a lot of paint. I usually put a lot of paint on the palette um, just because that, I think, encourages you to use more paint. Okay, so this is the last one. All right, so real quick, we got titanium white. There's CAD yellow light, uh, yellow ochre. Uh, this is burnt sienna, that's cad red light, uh, quinacridone red, uh, ultramarine, cerulean hue, and then a little bit of burnt umber too, since I'm going to be doing landscapes. So the palette is loaded. I'm just going to finish my breakfast and uh, head out the door. It's going to be cloudy or overcast today, which is not great for painting, but it's actually good for filming. I was finding that it was difficult on sunny days to kind of, um, you know, get the camera on the uh, canvas so that it showed up well. So anyway, overcast or cloudy is actually good for filming. So um, we'll just go out there and, uh, you know, if I get a good painting out of it, cool. But if not, that's okay too. You get to see my process. Heading over to Half Moon Bay about a week ago, and I noticed some plein air painters... Um, uh, that we're painting at Crystal Springs Reservoir, which I'll show you. I'm going to get out now. I had no idea that you could actually park right there, um, but there's no no sign saying no parking. Anyway, they, they were up this hill. I think they were over on this spot right here. Uh, it's always good to have you know, a bunch of spots in mind that you can go to, uh, depending on the weather. Around here in the Bay Area, <clears throat> the weather is different, say on the coast, uh, as opposed to closer to the Bay. So, uh, if you're wanting, uh, sometimes if it's uh, foggy on the coast, then you can stay on this side of the mountain and have sun. So, anyway, so this is a good place to keep in mind for the future. So it's been a while since uh, since my last video, so I figure I'll fill you in on uh, what's been going on. Um, I did have a show in October, which is kind of why I stopped making videos for a little bit. I just had, um, you know, it sort of, it didn't creep up on me, but uh, it was just like, I, at a certain point I realized that I had a lot of work still to do. So anyway, now with that behind me, um, and then I had some commissions and stuff too. 
But anyway, so uh, now I'm getting back to just getting outdoors and painting. And um, it seems like every time after a show, I kind of reconsider like what I want to do for the next show or, you know, what I want to, how I want to sort of experiment or grow uh, in the future with my painting. So lately what I've been uh, um, really working on is composition and trying to get more of the foreground into the painting and I'll show, I'll give an example of what that means. So I'm doing compositions where you can kind of see the ground at your feet and then also the distance. Um, I think that sort of, there's a certain energy to a painting like that. It makes you feel like you're, um, I don't know, it sort of pulls you in or makes you feel like you're right there in a way. So um, that's that's something that I've admired in other, uh, other painters' work, but I've only touched on it a little bit. Um, but that's something I'm having fun experimenting with. I know a lot of painters like to sort of uh, focus on one type of maybe subject matter or composition, which, and that's totally cool because every painter has their own, or every creator has their own sort of um, process that works for them. But uh, for me, experimentation and discovery has always been the thing that keeps me going. So I, I try to, uh, I always try to find, um, push myself and try to find new ways of creating pictures. So. That's kind of what I'm up to now. And, and plein air painting, getting outdoors, is a great way to do that for me. It's just because, you know, if the painting doesn't work out, I mean, you still got to, you know, either stand by the ocean or in some beautiful location, hopefully. Even if it's on a city street, you know, that's, I really enjoy that too. I, nice interaction with people and everything. So when you're outdoors and it fails, you've got a lot of other experiences to, uh, that make it enjoyable. Whereas when you fail in the studio, it's just you and the computer. And that's, uh, that's okay too, but I don't know. I like experimenting outdoors more. So that's what I've been up to. Oh my God. Oh, that was a deep hole. Anyway, we're here at Pescadero. I just noticed that the ocean is the most beautiful color right now. It's amazing that, that it's like a different color every time I come over here. Strange. Okay, so as usual, step one is to take a look around and see if I can find, um, you know, settle on a good composition. Uh, so, I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna walk around a little bit and uh, and take a look, kind of get some ideas, and then I'm gonna set up. So here's my setup, it's pretty uh, compact. We've got the, uh, we've got my easel here, and then I've got a bag that's got um, my palette, and then a wet panel carrier with a couple 11 by 14s, and then just a backpack. So with this, I can actually go long distances. It's pretty light. Okay, so I'm set up out here. Um, I've got my usual setup, and I put 11 by 14 on here. And uh, but yeah, here's my usual plein air setup. And so I'm gonna get started. First, I'm gonna do a sketch in burnt sienna, and uh, then I'll start laying in some color. So I realize there's a lot of glare on this and um, 
so I will, uh, when we get back to the studio, I can give you a better look at it. I didn't talk much while I was painting it just because <laughs> I was kind of struggling, but I can, uh, when I get back to the studio, I can, we can talk about what, I, what sort of decisions I was making. So I managed to do one more out there. I'm in the car warming up now. It got pretty windy and cold. It's 11.15 now, and, and so the wind is starting to pick up. So anyway, um, I didn't film that one because I was afraid the tripod might uh, blow over, even though I had rocks tied to it. But uh, we'll take a look back at the studio. Okay, so I am back to the house. Uh, let's take a look at these paintings. Okay, so here's painting number one. Uh, down below here you can see the foreground, the extended foreground that I was talking about, although it's not, it's not very extreme. In some cases I would have even more of the sand leading up to the water, um, so there's only a little bit of that in this one. Things I'd point out uh, when painting waves, there's usually to look for a reflection uh, right where the wave meets the sort of white water or the flat water, you'll see a reflection of the whiteness of the wave. Um, one of the, ch the challenges in this painting would be uh, just deciding where to put the waves and how to arrange the paint. It's kind of fun actually because uh, these uh, plein air seascapes are very much like an abstract you know, painting in some ways because you can just decide what you want to put and where. You can rearrange the mountains even and the background and, and certainly the water uh, and also the way the water behaves on the or the patterns of uh, sort of wet sand and everything. So anyway, that's all the only other thing that I'd say is compositionally, I do work with the rule of thirds. That would be if you divide the canvas into thirds, you put your points of interest on those. So we have right here at the top, third is where the horizon is. And then this wave is sort of at the intersection of thirds, kind of close to that. Uh, so that's it for this one. Let's take a look at the uh, second one. Okay, so here's painting number two. And uh, you can see there is, I did include a bit of the foreground here, but not, not an extreme amount. Actually, uh, looking at this, I could have done a square panel and included even more of the, the sand, uh, which would give you the illusion of, you know, that you're actually looking down, that the, the painting begins at your feet and then extends out. But anyway, that might be something I'll return, uh, I'll go back and I'll try that. Uh, so anyway, I was mostly attracted in, in, to this scene by the color of the water out here, this sort of blue-green, it was just amazing. And I'm not sure I quite captured it, but uh, that's what drew me to the scene. Um, and then also just the opportunity to experiment with random patterns, sort of uh, abstract patterns with the, with the sand and the waves and everything. Uh, there was a lot of chaos because water was coming from both sides around this big rock. So it's, it was pretty choppy in here and moving pretty quickly so uh you know i could just just kind of kept experimenting around until i found a pattern that i kind of liked as far as this wave goes you can see there's the reflection on the wet sand here i think that that sort of came out better maybe a little bit better on this painting or more visible uh so yeah the wet sand here you can see the ref this sort of lighter area reflection of this wave here that creates the illusion of wetness on on the uh on the sand here uh and again, sort of put the wave almost at the third and, uh, and this center of interest here, which is the color, you know, the colored water and everything, that's kind of on a third too. So putting points of interest on the thirds. Um, again, this was a second painting, so I usually have, sometimes I have more fun on the second painting, especially if the first one looks good, I'm happy with it, then I can just play and just have fun. And a lot of times those paintings come out really well, uh, often better. So it's kind of good to do a warm-up painting and then do another. So I usually try to do two paintings at least when I'm out there. And uh, uh, so this was fun. But now I'm going to show you a painting I did a few days ago, which gives you a, a more of an example of what the extended foreground is. Okay, so here's a painting from a few days ago uh, that shows what I'm talking about as far as uh, an extended foreground. So where you have the majority of the interest is right here up in the top of the canvas and then down below you've got this sort of, um, it's almost as if you're looking, you know, you're looking straight into the distance here but then here you're looking down. So uh, it gives you this impression that this is more, you know, closer to your feet. Anyway, I was, although I was up on a cliff <laughs> and my feet were very far from this area but you get the idea. Uh, just sort of a perspective thing. Um, so that's what I was uh, talking about when I, I mean the extended foreground. Okay, so that does it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it and got something out of it. 
uh, I will see you in the next one.